Hey, everybody. Welcome back to This is the Thread. And this is the Thread. This is me. This is Chris Lazar. We are today um, going to continue on what we talked about last episode about cell phones. And I did a, um, try to do a little more research on it. Because honestly, I'm coming at this thing like I really, I, I don't know. That's how I'm coming at it. So I, I kind of want a little more information on it. Because as you saw from when we were reading the manual to the cell phone, it really made it sound like that, hey, basically, and <clears throat> maybe this isn't going to do it just as I encourage you to go read your cell phone manual, your cell phone health and safety information. It's pretty much, it's got to be in every single cell phone that you buy comes with it. And the basic gist that I get from it is that, hey, okay, yes, cell phones emit electromagnetic radiation, but we've done studies, we've enacted, uh, we've got these two governing bodies that do tests, we got engineers that know your specific absorption rate and what is most allowable and safe for you to to be around is basically kind of like what I got at. And really nothing else. They did say warn about children. It, it did say that. Um, and it did say, I believe, a distance to keep yourself from the cell, from the cell phone. Um, or rather, no, they tested when they tested. Uh, shoot, and... I'll have to go back and look at this. When they test it, when they do their test, they test it when it's like 1.5 centimeters away from the body. Hey, that's great, but what if you're talking to somebody and the phone is up to your head? You know, I kind of just thought about that. Like, why not study that? But anyway, that's kind of the gist that I got from it. Is that, hey, it emits it. It's not bad for you because we did the test and we were not able to come to con conclusive conclusions. It's kind of a weird word to say, but I did a little bit of research. I came across a study. The Iranian Journal of Basic Medical Sciences. The study is titled Exposure to Cell Phone Radio Frequency Changes Corticotropin Hormone Levels and histology of the brain and adrenal glands in male Worcester rats. Pretty interesting title. Most of the studies I found, too, on cell phones were foreign studies. I, 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 and I was using a, like, kind of free open access website that you, you kind of got, like, I was able to print this for free. If you go on places like Google Scholar, uh, PubMed, I believe you'll be able to see the abstract for it, but you would have to actually physically pay to have access to like the PDF, the full text, I believe. I And it's been a while since I've been in this game, so it, it, I'm not exactly sure about that. I just made sure that I was getting this for free. God bless. <laughs> there is no such thing as free lunch, but God bless that I was able to get this for free. So anyway, that was the title of the journal. Basically, what it is saying, they did a study taking these rats, exposing them to cell phones, uh, a cell phone, and specifically, a, a it seems like an older cell phone. And the kind of interesting thing about this was this study was published in 2018, so relatively new study, but they used an older cell phone that had a 2G network. And I'm already thinking right now why not use a smart smartphones is what most people i feel like are are using these days wouldn't you think like anyway um so what did they exactly want to study here um they wanted to see and i'm going to read here from from the study, the main goal of the present work was to study the long-term effects of mobile RF 900 megahertz exposure with special focus on adrenal gland pathophysiology and function. So what did they do? They had these rats, right? They had these rats. They broke them up into a couple different groups here. 
couple different groups, four specific groups. So they had a control group, eight rats in each group. Four groups. Uh, the control group, let me see here, did not receive mobile radio frequency uh, radiation and was kept under normal conditions. Uh, then there's the next group, which was also kind of served as a control. Uh, group SO was also considered as a control group. Control group. Animals were exposed to switched off cell phones six hours per day for two months. Okay, so you got the phone in there, but it's not on. And I remember watching a video. Um, shout outs to the guy who did this video because I've always wondered this. He had a phone. He had it on next to a radiation reading device. And he switched it to airplane mode. And immediately, the amounts of radiation it was reading like went almost to zero. There was still a little bit. There was still a little bit that it was picking up, but not nearly as much as when it was fully on. So I, I forget the video. Shout out to that guy who did that because I always wondered how safe airplane mode, or not how safe it was, but how much radiation the phone emits when it's on airplane mode. And it's really not a whole lot. Um, then there was the two experimental groups. Uh, the first one, both very similar. So animals received cell phone radiation exposure for six hours per day for one month in the first group. And then they had a second experimental group where they received uh, the same six hours per day radi uh, exposure for two months. The exposure time, they were exposed to between 9 and 3 p.m., The cell phone output in the rats boxes were measured by spectrum analyzer. Yeah, okay. Um, converted to watts. Okay, yes. So what were they measuring here? They were measuring kind of like uh, the stress response. Basically, so they kind of talked about in the introduction, talking about the adrenal gland cortex. Um, from there, it synthesizes glucocorticoids, uh, basically your cortisol. Cortisol response is how you respond to stress. It plays a factor in that when you're under a stressful situation. I believe cortisol um, increases in your bloodstream. Um and it's re in response to this ACTH hormone, adrenocorticotropin hormone, ACTH, uh, which is secreted from your pituitary gland, which is pituitary, pituitary. Oh, no, I was thinking of pineal gland. Never mind. I'm sorry about that. Um, and this was all part of the HPA axis, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. Has a protective role during stressful conditions. It's your, um, from what I gather, fight or flight, basically. Um, and they were kind of showing that from previous studies, as early as the 1960s, EMF exposure, not necessarily from cell phones, but from EMF, EMF expo exposure acts as a chronic stressor that directly um, has the potential to affect your stress response, affect your, um, that HPA access. Um, it was saying in here that a low frequency magnetic field can act as an anxiety related behavior of animals in the emotional state of people. Um, EMF, the effects of EMF on stress hormones, depression like states, and anxiety related behaviors has been investigated in many, many studies. And the results are contradictory. So there's some that say it's not really that good for you. And there's some that say, hey, there's really not conclusive evidence for this. But the present study was designed to examine the probable effects of chronic exposure of cell phone radio frequency on adrenal gland structure and level of ACTH and cortisol. And they also did uh, histology on the brain tissue 
Hey, I did histology too. Yeah. I did a few years ago. Yeah, that was one of my jobs when I worked in the research lab for a year. I bet you didn't know that. So going on here, um, we can we can talk. All right, I'm back. That was uh, my dad at the door. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to business. Um, <clears throat> where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Measuring stress response. Um, ACTH, cortisol, um, histology of the brain. Um, should we just get the results? Let's just get to the results. Um, results are pretty interesting. Um, mobile phones with a radio frequency 900 megahertz triggered ACTH and cortisol secretions. Now, um, it was different for the two experimental groups. So the more exposure they had, which meant uh, for the second control group or experimental group, uh, they were exposed for two months. Remember, the first experimental group was exposed for just one month. And the second experimental group had a lot more secretions. Uh, comparison of animal initial and final body weight between groups revealed that chronic exposure to mobile phone radiation has no effect on animal body weight, although the experimental period, all animals gain weight, okay, uh, for one to two months, significantly increased compared to control groups, the plasma levels of ACTH in the rats. Very interesting. Next, long-term exposure to cell phone radio frequency induces hypertrophy and disorganization of zona fasciculata of the adrenal gland. Uh, it goes on to say the ZF here, zona fasciculata. The adrenal glands is located between the zona glomerulus, glomerulosa and zona reticularis, and its cells have clear lipid-rich cytoplasm and are arranged in radi radial cords. Um, this layer is the layer that secretes cortisol in response to ACTH, Um, normally you would see something like hypertrophy getting bigger, bigger, bigger's better. Well, maybe not so much with a stress response. I've always thought that a little bit of stress is a good thing, but you don't want to be stressed all day, all the time, right? You, you, you probably wouldn't want that. So this is kind of indicating to me that things are getting a little out of whack when they are exposed to this for the amount of time they are. Maybe not a good thing. Um, Long-term exposure to cell phone radio frequency causes vacuolation in brain tissue. Um, this is the part that I didn't really understand vacuoles. I mean, vacuoles, like a vacuum, something of that nature. Um, cell phone radio frequency exposure, six hours per day for one and two months resulted in the appearance of more vacuoles with bigger size in the brain tissue. So again, bigger, you might think bigger is better. Bigger muscles are better. Okay, maybe. In regards to like these, these things, hormones, or, um, uh, organ sizes, probably not the best thing. No, because now when you're talking bigger too, how you might be talking cancer because cancer is rapidly dividing cells. Maybe, and th the thing with the study, it didn't come out and outright say anything like that. It didn't come out right outright and say cell phones cause cancer. Remember what I was saying in the last video? Very hard to prove that something's directly linked, right? Very, very hard to prove. So they they looked at something very, very specific, very, very specific, and they said, okay, we showed that these hormones, exposure is leading to increases in these hormones. It's leading to hypertrophy in the adrenal glands. And in their uh, discussion here, 
they kind of talk about, you know, what are the uh, Im implications of this. Uh, let me see if I can find that. Um, so in, in their discussion, they kind of talked a little more about this. They didn't really come out and outright say like, hey, this can lead to anything specific, um, any like specific disease. They kind of just said that, hey, this is increasing. Uh, we don't necessarily know uh, why. There have been some studies that have also shown that stress response has increased from uh, EMF or EMR uh, radiation um, and also from a magnetic field. But there also were studies that, that did not show that link. Um, they even said as far as the vacuoles in the brain, sure, okay, we saw that the vacuoles increased as a result of uh, the, the exposure to the cell phone and the cell phone radiation. Um, but exposure for a longer time, and I'm going to try to find the specific sentence here. Um, the histopathologic findings that may result, it may result from several potential mechanisms um, and that the vac increase in vacuoles in the brain uh, did not correlate, um, it was not associated with neurological dysfunction. So I thought that was kind of interesting as well. Um, so what what does this really mean? You know, I think a lot of people, they, they focus on the cancer bit with phones. Phones cause cancer. You, you could, you, you'll you probably see a lot of videos on that. Um, I like that this study was very specific, very specific to the stress response because another thing, maybe you can break down this cell phone thing into two um, different types of negative health effects. So you have physical, I don't even want to say physical, but um, major like disease causing like that cell phones major uh, cause major diseases cancer you know they cause i don't know alzheimer's or um a neuropathy or you know something like that and then you have m maybe like the mental health so I, I was almost going for physical and mental physical being like diseases that spring about mental health being your behaviors and this is kind of a little more linking to it affects your behavior. I mean, think about that. It, it it's a chronic. It, it was shown to be a chronic stressor. Increases in cortisol, increase in uh, plasma uh, ACTH, um, increased hypertrophy of the adrenal glands. I mean, that that's your stress response. Now, they only did this for two months, right? People have their cell phones on them all the fucking time, right? And especially now, smartphones, 4G, at least. And that's why, I, that's my biggest, one of my biggest, uh, like, quips about this study is they used a 2G uh, Nokia phone, 1208. You know, it, it does it, and this is where, where I don't know um, if the uh, frequency band of that phone is the same as a smartphone. You know, maybe it is, but because it's only a 2G network on that phone, it, it leads me to believe that, hey, it's not as powerful. But think about that. Not as powerful of a phone still producing these results. Do you think it, do you think that's good? Do you think that's a good thing to be at an increased, an increase of those hormones to po potentially be in a elevated stress situation right and then think about the the cell phone use and being um i guess in isolation like hey i'm not going to talk to anybody i got my phone think about that think about the people that you see 
everywhere you go, heads down in their phone, they're not interacting with anybody sitting on the park bench, sitting at the library table with a group of friends. Isolation plus that increase in stress response, could that negatively affect your behavioral health? I I mean, maybe, maybe this this was just the the first of the studies that I looked at. Um, I, I'd like to take a look at a few more um, that I found around there. If you guys have any that um, you'd want me to take a look at, let me know. This is the thread. Sorry, my dad interrupted <laughs> in the middle. My dad came in. He was talking about keto diet, kind of related in a way. Um, but guys, this was fun. Um, I definitely want to look more into this. So next episode, expect a little more on this subject. Thanks guys. This is thread.